A lot of news today, a lot of changes, um, so bear with me as I go through uh, a number of updates and important new announcements. As a reminder, we are now at a phase where I'll do these Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 1 o'clock. So please tune in again on Monday of next week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday of next week. There's going to be a number of different announcements as we start to think about phase three, the summer, where we're going from here. So I would just encourage you all to continue to tune in. Uh, it's our time together as a state to come together and get the information that we need to deal with the ongoing coronavirus in Rhode Island. I want to begin today by recognizing uh, the importance of today's celebration. <clears throat> I want to recognize that today is Juneteenth. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, it is um, an important holiday, and it's a celebratory <clears throat> holiday. It's an important holiday. It's also, I would say, a time to reflect. Uh, now more than ever, it's a time to reflect and to ask ourselves what we can do, each and every one of us, to end the scourge of racism and to bring about the promise of a more equal and equitable Rhode Island, to remind ourselves of our ugly history as a country uh, as it relates to slavery, discrimination, and racism, and to commit ourselves to a brighter future um, where nobody is discriminated against on the basis of the color of their skin. So uh, I'll be joining some Juneteenth celebrations later today, and I would urge all of Rhode Islanders to take some time today to celebrate or reflect in your own way. Okay, we'll begin today, um, as we always do, with the data. If you could please put that up on the screen. Today we have 68 new cases. Yeah, so again, good news. We're holding steady at a, at a low number, hospitalizations trending down. Uh, sadly, another nine deaths. I cannot wait for the day that I can get up here and report no deaths. We, we aren't there yet. As I've said so many times, we are not out of the woods. The virus is here. It's here to stay until there's a vaccine. We have no reason to believe that it has abated. What we do know is that we've changed. And all the changes we've made have made a difference and have been literally and truly saving lives and keeping people out of the hospital. Uh, having said that, every time I see the data, I'm reminded that many more people are getting sick, people are still in the hospital, people are still on ventilators, and sadly, we continue to lose lives to this virus every single day. So I would ask you to remember that, and I would ask you to stay safe and continue to follow the rules. Uh, we have been in phase two, been in phase two for a little more than two weeks, just over two weeks. So I would like to take some time today to start to preview um, what phase three will look like. Uh, I'll, I wanna just say this. Phase two, phase one was very limited. In phase two, which we've been doing for a couple of weeks now, we have reopened La almost every part of our economy. Businesses, manufacturers, retail, hairdressers, barbers, gyms, church. You've seen a broad reopening. And the data still looks good. Phase three is going to be an even more significant reopening. Really, essentially everything will be re reopened in some form or fashion. The only way that's going to work is if we work even harder, all of us, to follow the rules. And I'll tell you, like, personally, that's, that's a hard message. It, it feels strange. On the one hand, the weather's getting better, the virus seems to have subsided, we have fewer cases, but yet we all have to follow the rules even more. And the reason is because we're all gonna be getting out more, social gatherings are gonna get bigger, and if we don't try even harder to wash our hands, stay home if we're sick, you know, don't leave the house if you're sick, get tested if you feel unwell, um, stay six feet away, avoid big crowds, wear our masks, if we don't all do that even more, then when we reopen the economy, we are gonna get into trouble. 
Um, my approach this entire time has been not to be heavy handed with enforcement. You know, we don't want mask shaming or fining people unnecessarily or heavy handedness. And we're not going to take a heavy handed approach. I mean, if we, we have enforcement and we're serious about it, we've ramped up our inspectors. We have a lot more inspectors and we're going to continue for businesses and we're going to continue to increase our inspection of businesses. But we're not out to, you know, slap you on the wrist. We're out to remind you to comply and to help you to comply. And if, however, you're flagrantly and continuously violating the rules, then we are going to fine you and in the worst case scenario, close you down until you comply. My point is this. I'm asking you to follow the rules because I want you to take pride in being a Rhode Islander and take pride in the Rhode Island response to COVID. You guys are awesome. Rhode Island is leading the nation, leading the nation in our cases declining, in our compliance with mask wearing, in our testing. So keep it going. Be proud to be a Rhode Islander. Keep it going. Don't follow the rules because you're afraid of getting into trouble. Follow the rules because it's the right thing to do and it keeps your neighbors and your family safe. Like, again, we wear our mask not for ourselves, for the person who we might make sick. So with all of that as a caveat, and I'm asking everyone to try a little harder and make smart choices to keep everyone safe, I'd like to ask you to please put up on the screen phase three guidance. So let's talk a minute about phase three. In phase three, indoor social gatherings should be no more than 50 to 75 people. Why the range? Low risk is 50. If you're willing to take a bit more risk, it's 75 and 75 is the limit. Outdoor social gatherings should be no more than 75 to 150. Same thing. Low risk, 75. If you want to take higher risk, higher risk is 150. 150 is the max. What's a social gathering? A social gathering is a party, a wedding, a networking event, a quinceanera, a backyard barbecue, a graduation party. It's, here's how you think about it. It's a gathering of people, all of whom pretty much know each other and will be mingling. So it's not going to a restaurant where you go with a few people and don't know everyone else. It's a gathering of people, friends, family, who are all going to be mingling together. If you do that outdoors, we ask you maximum 150, indoors maximum 75. But we're telling you it's lower risk. The lower the number, the lower the risk. Um, now, you might be hearing in what I'm saying a different approach, and that's intentional. So I want to take a minute. In phase two and in phase one, we gave very detailed, strict guidance, setting by setting, industry by industry. We thought that was appropriate. Phase three, I want to take a different approach. We're going to trust you to do the right thing. Everybody in Rhode Island now understands the risks, understands how to reduce the risk, and should understand that it's in your best interest to follow the rules. Furthermore, it's the right thing to do as a Rhode Islander to protect your community. Also, we need to get out of, the, we could be living with coronavirus for a year or more. So slowly, I want to get out of the business of telling everyone exactly what to do, exactly how to do it, but rather to provide you with guidelines and leading from a place of trust and confidence that you're going to, going to live within those guidelines, follow the rules, and reduce the risk. Um, on social gatherings, uh, I do want to say this, because of course it's summer in Rhode Island, we get a lot of questions about weddings. Weddings are once in a lifetime event. It, they're also a big part of our economy. I was in the flower shop this morning. A woman said they've already lost 17 weddings, which is heartbreaking. Um, let me give you a flavor for what I hope 
phase four to look like, which we hope, knock on wood, no promises, but assuming everything looks good, we'll begin phase four in August. By phase four, social gatherings, including weddings, we'll probably see limits of about 100 inside and 250 outside. So if you're planning a wedding in July, August, September, I hope that this gives you some guidance and you can do some advanced planning. Recognizing, of course, that if things change, if we see a spike, if there's some unforeseen increase in cases, then I'll have to adjust. Okay, um, I wanna talk now about uh, other places of interaction, not social gatherings. So all indoor settings that are currently operating at a square footage capacity, which is essentially retail stores. In phase three, you can increase up to one person per 100 square feet, provided that you follow all the other rules that you're currently following. Mask wearing indoors, providing for six feet of distance, marking where people can stay in line so they're six feet of distance, providing hand sanitizer, etc. All indoor settings currently operating at a percent capacity cap, for instance restaurants, can increase up to two-thirds capacity in phase three, 66 percent. Um, and that, so that's restaurants, places of worship, Anything that's currently governed in phase two by capacity, percent capacity, you can go up in phase three to 66% or two thirds. Again, as long as you continue to comply with everything else, hand washing, sanitization, temperature screening, mask wearing, six feet markers, people in line, no bunching up, Please, no bunching up in line, no bunching up and congregating after mass, after a service, et cetera. All, everything, you, again, ev you now know, we now know, being in a crowd for any length of time is a bad place to be. Being next to people for more than 10 minutes is a bad place to be. So be, just be aware and follow the rules. In phase three, um, pretty much all indoor venues that remain closed in phase two can reopen. So what is, that would be like movie theaters, bowling alleys, arcades, museums, performance venues. We're gonna allow these venues to reopen at up to 66% of capacity or 100 square feet per person provided that everyone can maintain six feet of distance. Um, so same, it's always the same thing. Make sure you can have the six feet of distance. There are a handful of very large venues like theaters, auditoriums, you know, think like the Dunk in downtown Providence, where these capacity restrictions could result in very, very large groups, like over a thousand people. Fortunately, we're a small state and there's only a, a, literally a handful of these large, large indoor venues. So to that end, any large venue of assembly that wants to have more than 250 people in an indoor space, we're asking you to submit a specific individualized plan to Commerce and the Department of Health and we'll go through and approve of your plan just to make sure that we think you have the proper precautions in place so you can do it safely. Um, the documents that are on your screen now will be posted later today on reopeningri.com. Next week, Commerce will continue to update reopeningri.com with a little bit more information. But again, it's not going to be the extreme detail for phase two, because we want to name to a place of, of guidelines and let you figure out how to best live within those guidelines safely for phase three. Um, I want to take an, another second to briefly, out, to, to briefly address outdoor settings, this being summer, hopefully we'll all spend time outside. 
parks and outdoor theaters in particular. Here's the good news. We now know pretty definitively that increased airflow outside significantly decreases the likelihood of spreading the virus. And that means we know larger gatherings can happen outdoors safely if we maintain social distance. So to that end, in phase three, as I said, there'll be no cap on the number of people who can be in an outdoor setting at one time. So that's good news, that's great news. But we still have to be careful. So we don't recommend going above 250 people. It's our job, led by Dr. Alexander Scott and her team, to tell you what we think is safe. That's why we're saying this is low risk, this is higher risk. So technically, you can have an outdoor, go to an outdoor venue, you know, fireworks or something, with more than 250 people outside. But we don't think that's a good idea. We don't think that's safe. But we do know if you're outside, it is a, it's much safer um, than inside. What we're asking you is, if you're a municipality or some other big organization, and you are planning on an event outside of 250 people or more, please get in contact with us so that we can help you provide guidelines so we can keep people safe. So if, you're, if it's an organized event, like a festival or 4th of July or something, and you know there's gonna be more than 250 people outdoors, um, we need you to be in touch with us. We wanna understand how you're gonna go about it, and we might require you to give us in writing a specific plan so we can have confidence that you're gonna keep everybody safe. I also wanna say we're here to help. We're not here to be heavy handed with enforcement. We're here to help. We want everyone to be safe and we want people to go back to work and we want people to enjoy this summer. So call Commerce, 521 help, 521 help. Someone will answer the phone and they'll listen to you. Call the Department of Health, go on the Reopening RI website, ask a question. Um, everything I just said will be online. But, but really, just we're asking you to work with us for the good of the community. And we're giving you guidelines that we believe will keep everybody safe. Because the last thing we want is a surge. There are states seeing a surge. There are states right now that their hospitals are at capacity. Not Rhode Island. Let's never let it be Rhode Island. We can have a very fun summer and get more people back to work and do it safely if we just really try to follow the rules. And I, oh, by the way, I will say it's a gorgeous weekend. I'm sure there'll be people going to Block Island. Please do the right thing on the ferry. Please, you gotta be on the ferry for an hour. If you're sitting right next to the same person for an hour, please put your mask on. Go, have a good time in Block Island but do the right thing. We don't want an outbreak on the island. We don't want an outbreak anywhere. Um, okay, a, f a few more notes and then I wanna move on to schools. As we've already announced, but it's important to remind you, summer camps in Rhode Island reopen Monday the 29th. We've already released the guidance and nothing I've said today changes that guidance. We already have approved plans for almost 9,000 spots for kids for summer camp. We just received a number of other plans. If you're a municipality or a municipal leader who hasn't sent us a plan yet, we'd ask you to think about doing it and there's money available to help you. We wanna be able to get as many kids in summer camp or recreational activity as possible and that starts June 29th. We, um, some more good news, we will also be updating childcare guidelines for phase three to increase the group size from stable groups of 10 to stable groups of 20. So phase three, childcare, is gonna go from stable groups of 10 to stable groups of 20. 
First of all, hats off to the child care providers. You're doing an unbelievably terrific job. We hear from parents every day. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're also hearing from child care providers that they want to and need to be able to go up to 20. So phase three, you go up to 20. Um, next week, I will be back to you with, with more information about youth sports guidance for phase three and adult sports guidance for phase three. There will be some relaxation there. To be clear, that's just phase three, which will be just the summer. We're, I'm not yet ready to release guidance around you know, school sports when the fall comes. And then finally, the Department of Health is working individually with nursing homes and assisted living facilities on plans to allow visitation with limits in phase three. So to those of you who've been hanging on for all these months without visiting a loved one in a nursing home, hope is on the way for phase three and we'll be providing that guidance next week.